for tonight, Lady Johnson. Hallelujah. Thank God for Lady Van Beaver Howe. Everybody in their respectable places, all the ministers in their respectable places, everybody that make up the body. Hallelujah. Thank God for Sister Reynolds on tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's give God one more hand clap of praise. For he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And we do honor him in everything that we do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This time we're going to call up Sister Dana. Amen. To do our welcome. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise as she come up. Hallelujah. All right. My welcome is a two-page paper on tonight. <laughs> to God be the glory. We're so glad that you thought it not robbery to join us for our 10th annual church anniversary. If you're new here, we're glad you're with us, and we'd all love the opportunity to get to know you better. The reason we're here tonight, and not only tonight, but this week, is to assemble together for worship under one roof to one God. This anniversary is scheduled to end on Sunday, October the 16th. We hope that you'll continue to worship with us beyond that deadline. It's going to be an awesome time in God. Hallelujah. Should you need anything during your worship experience, our, our, our ushers, nurses, and hospitality staff are standing by to make your experience one to remember. Please note that there is to be no food, gum, or drink of any kind to be bought into the sanctuary. The restrooms are to the back, so feel free to take a break when needed. Parents, please monitor your children and keep a close eye on them. The altar is always available for your personal sacrifice. Hallelujah. I believe if you want to break through, you can get it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep in mind that this service is subjected to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. At this time, we're going to move on to the next part of service, the ministry of giving. Amen. By none other than our very own uh, District Elder Nixon Philliston. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise that he comes up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every
say hallelujah tap your name and say neighbor I'm giving God a full praise because I need a full blessing ain't no empty handed saints in the building give God a full praise Glory to God. I done got happy and forgot to tell you to give. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. If you can, come. I glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. When you know he's been good to you. When you know you should have been dead a long time ago. I, sometimes I just look back and wonder how I made it and how I got over. But since I'm here, I might as well tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Why don't you come be a blessing on tonight? Why don't you give with expectation in what you believe in God to do? Amen. Come quickly. Come quickly. Amen. Glory, glory, glory.
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I thought after 10 years you'd be able to give him a better praise than that. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. After all you've been through, you're still here. Come on, let's give God praises tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I do have the pleasure, amen, of introducing the speaker tonight. Amen. He is a dear brother, amen. And I do know that he, amen, has a word from God. Every time, amen, that I pray and I ask God, God, I need some help, amen. I know, hallelujah, where I can get my help. He always sends, amen, Pastor Tim. And he, I don't think he knows it, but he always sends Pastor Tim either with a text message, a phone call, or some encouraging words. So tonight I do, amen, if you do need help from the Lord tonight, and you do need a word from God, amen, I do ask that you open up your spirit, open up your hearts and your mind, amen. God will speak to you tonight through this man of God, amazing man of God, amen, none other than my brother, Pastor Kasim Tillman, amen. Almighty God, we need you right now. Reveal your glory and pour your spirit out. Almighty God, we need you right now. Reveal your glory and pour your spirit out. Almighty God, we Oh, oh, oh. 
Spirit, more of your presence, more of your love and your mercy and healing. We want more of your spirit, more of your presence, more of your love and your mercy and healing. We need you. We need you. Oh, we need you. We need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands up again to magnify the Lord. The mighty God that he is. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Let him minister to you right now. Hey, God. I declare if you open up your heart and your spirit unto him. Hallelujah. He'll speak to you right now. He's moving even right now. I can feel him. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Lord, we need you, Lord. We come here tonight, God, expecting something, Lord. A lot of us been going through, Lord. But we made it here, Lord. And right now, God, just say say something to us. Hallelujah. Come on. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Yes, Lord. Ayamasekana. We need you, Lord. Hey, Lord. We desire you, Jesus. More of you is what we need, Lord. Less of us right now, God. I've been getting away too long, Lord. I've been hindering you too long, Lord. God, I need you to have your way in me, Lord. That your will may be done in my life, Lord. And God, I give you the glory. I give you the honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Put those hands together and begin to bless the Lord. I said, put those hands together and begin to bless the Lord. He's a mighty God. Bless him. The Alpha, the Omega. The lover of my soul. The keeper of my mind. Hey, God. The joy that's in my heart. Look at him and say, neighbor, it's the Lord, it's the Lord, it's the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. And we bless him, we bless him. We thank him. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Oh, Jesus. We honor the Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless him on tonight. I don't desire to be before you long, amen. But I can feel something in here. Hallelujah. Lay it out of my soul. Hallelujah. Right now, just talk to him, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we didn't had a lot of praising and dancing and singing, hallelujah. And But right now, just talk to him. Lord. I declare if you talk to him, he'll talk back to you. Hey, Tamasa. I see you, sis. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. Ah, all I need is you, Lord. Hey, Tabasa. God, you know what I'm facing, Lord. You know what I've been dealing with, Lord. Hey, Sha Tamasa. You know what I haven't been telling my pastor, Lord. The struggles, Lord. Hey, Sha Tabasa. The times when I want to let you go, Lord. Hey, Masa. The times when I didn't see my way out of my situation, Lord. When I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, Lord. Lord, right now, God, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord. 
I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you that I'm still here, Lord. I'm still here, Lord. I'm still here. If you can cut my mind open, hallelujah, and see what I've been thinking, hallelujah. See the thoughts that have been running in my mind. The thoughts of suicide, the thoughts of giving up. There's Shabbat. Hey, Lord, Lord, I can't take it no more, God. If it ain't one thing, it's another, Lord. Oh, and right now, God, I just want to say thank you, Lord. I wouldn't make it without you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As our dear sister sang that song, just lift your hands up to the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. More, more, Lord. Sang that from the heart. Mm. God, I pour my heart out right now, Lord. Ah, I pour my heart out right now, Lord. Yes, shut up. Jesus. More, more, Lord. I need more, Lord. I'm running low, Lord. I'm running on empty, Lord. I need more. I need more, Jesus. And right now, God, I'm going to pray, God, so I, I feel my tank being full, Lord. Yeah, so I feel like I can go a little longer, Lord. A little more. We want more again. Oh, let your glory fall. Come down, Holy Spirit. Come down. Worship is in the building. Worship is in the building. We want worship is in the building. Come on, New North. Come on, New North. Hallelujah. Let Jesus. Go there, let's. Go there. Hallelujah. Just like Peter said, if that be you, Lord, bid me to come. Bid me to come, Lord. I dare you to step out. Yeah, Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is working right now. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. I'm about to get out your way. Hallelujah. Uh, but don't hold back right now. Go there, Sister Dana. How about shut up? Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't want to lead the same, Lord. I don't want to lead the same, Lord. I can't give for something, God. Jesus. We need you to pour out, pour out on us. Pour out on us. Pour out on us. Yes, Pour out on us. We need you to pour out. Jesus. We want you to pour out. We need a refreshing on tonight. We need a refreshing on tonight. We want you to pour out on us. You're not a failure. You just made a mistake. You got to pick yourself up. Pick yourself up. 
Devil set some quicksand in front of y'all, Shabasa. It was supposed to take you out, hallelujah. It was supposed to take you out, hallelujah. You shouldn't be right here. You shouldn't be in this present worshiping the Lord. The devil had plans to take you out. We want you to pray. The devil had plans to make sure you won't make it to another EGA. Hiya, Basa. But right now in your worship, declare hallelujah. I ain't going back. Declare hallelujah. I'm going to press forward. Hallelujah, Basa. Yes, Lord. We're just worshiping. I'm about to move. Go there, Sister Alicia. Here I cry. Go there. Oh, Hallelujah. We need you to pour out. We need you to pour out, oh God. Hallelujah. Pour a fresh on us. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, we do give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Ah. Uh, we could do better than that, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you've been through something, all you can say is thank you, Lord. When you messed up, all you can do is say thank you, Lord. This shout out. I dare you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We do give honor to our. Beloved Apostle, Apostle C.A. Coward. Uh, to our presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod. To our board of bishops. Uh, to our district bishop, Bishop Kevin Williams. Amen. Amen. To our district elder, my pastor, Pastor Nixon Phyllis. And amen. Uh, thank God for the host pastor on tonight, Pastor Eli Porter Sr., amen. Thank God for you, sir. To Pastor Johnson, hallelujah. To all the ministers, amen, on tonight. To the First Lady, to First Lady Van, amen. To Pastor Van, hallelujah. <laughs> My brother, hallelujah. Thank God for him doing a great work there in Jessup. We don't see each other a lot, amen, but I love him. Amen. To everyone in their respectable places, say, look to your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm happy you're here. Hallelujah. I don't desire to hold you long, but go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And Pastor Johnson, don't mind reading for me. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. And when you get it, shout the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank God for my one of my little brothers being here. <laughs> uh, we got a, a weird thing about us. Hey Amen. Seven of us in total. Six boys and one girl. And we got this weird thing about us where we don't we we don't gotta see each other every day. But when we see each other, we just start laughing. Amen. <laughs> we just, not, like, you'll be around us and say, why are they laughing all the time? Amen. That's just a thing that we do, but it's love. You know, I love him, and I'm happy that he's here. Amen. 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 But Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and verse 8, when you get it, shout the highest praise. Oh, you don't mind reading that for me? 
Better is the end of a thing. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Than the beginning thereof. Uh, the theme on tonight is built to last. And if I had a subtopic, you know, just like you got con construction zones or work zones, we're in the God zone. The God zone. Hey, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank him. Quick word of prayer. God, we thank you, Lord. God, I pray that you will bless the people. Use my mouth to minister to them, Lord. And God, I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. And if you've been in Savannah lately, Savannah's doing a lot of construction. <laughs> Everywhere you go, construction, construction, construction. Amen. And when you first look at something that's being built, and you all remember when they was building on this highway here and they stretched the lanes, it was mess everywhere. It smelled like mess <laughs> driving through it. And you never can appreciate something at the beginning stages. When we look at the construction in Savannah and, and on 90, uh, 16, you just see a whole bunch of mess. Stuff everywhere. And because we're not a part of and we haven't seen the blueprint, we, ain't, we don't get excited. But a person that's seen the blueprint and seen what they're building and what it's going to become, they don't mind working at it. They don't mind getting up every day and building because they know the finished product. And you're just like that highway, that building. When the God started first working on you, call you in the church, amen, you a mess. You a mess. You're everywhere. Got stuff everywhere. <laughs> and a lot of times... We can't appreciate the beginning stages of something. We like the finished product of it. But I thank God that he, amen, has patience with us. Yes, sir. And in order to be built to last, amen, you have to know who's building and who's working on you. Right. Amen. And don't despise, amen, where you are now. Don't, amen, quit because where you are now. Because where you are now, amen, is not the finished product. Right. Nobody in here is at the finished product when it comes to God. Right. Nobody in here, amen, is ready. Like Paul said, I finished my course. Amen. I'm ready for my departure. None of us are at that point right now. That means God is still working on me. Look at them and say, neighbor, he's still working on me. He's still working on me. This is God's zone. Hallelujah. Right. And a lot of times when you got construction, they got detours. And we get mad at the detours because it's kind of reroute us and it's take a long time to get to your destination. It kind of extends your destination, your time. But the thing about construction, if you have one lane and I'm starting to do construction, that means I'm adding another lane. Or I'm adding another lane. A lot of time, God is trying to stretch you out. When he's working on you, amen, it may be some detours, some delays, but God is trying to stretch you out, amen. Only when you're driving, amen, on two lanes, it's, just, <laughs> it's kind of boring. I remember with Statesboro, you only had two. You had it one way and the other way, amen. It was boring. Nothing but trees, too. We used to come here, and that was an hour, you know, we was out there partying with uh, Minister Frank at, amen. <laughs> I ain't going to tell his testimony, amen. But we used to come down here, and there's nothing but trees. But when they start to work on it, they extend it, or they widen, amen, or add another lane. Don't get discouraged when God sends you on a detour because he's working. You don't need patience just with other people, but you need patience with God. Because you never know what God is doing in your life. 
And I want to talk about a few people, amen, in the scriptures. Go to Exodus. I don't desire to be before you. Exodus chapter 4. And verse 8. And it shall come to pass, Mm -hmm. if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Uh And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Uh And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh, my Lord, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither mm. heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech. I am slow of speech. Read. And of a slow tongue. I'm a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him. The Lord said unto him. Who hath made man's who mouth? Who has made men's mouth? When it comes to God, and he's a master builder. Yes, uh, when he made you. He understood that you will have a defect. He made you with that. He constructed you with an issue that you might have in the future. Because that same issue that he allows you or he created you with was going to bring you to him. Was going to allow you to depend on him. So he made Moses from his mother's womb with a speech impediment. He constructed this man of God a certain way so he can get the glory out of his life. And you are the same way. God has constructed you and made you a certain way and you might not like it. You might not like how God made you. You might not have like, God, I got this. How You're calling me to preach, but I can't speak. You're calling me the same, but I got a stuttering problem. You're calling me to pray, amen, but... I don't see myself doing this because of the issue or the defect that I got. Amen. But God said, who has made men's mouth? Good God or God. God has built you and made you a certain way. And all you got to do is trust in God. Because when you trust in him, you understand that. Hey, you made me like this, Lord. So you got to help me. You called me to do this, Lord. So you got to help me. Amen. Read. Or who make it the dumb, uh-huh. or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth. I'm going to be with that you're complaining with. Yes, sir. I want to use that which you don't like about yourself. My Lord. I want to use, amen, that same thing that you're going in prayer about and asking God to move. I want to use that. Yes, sir. Lord, I'm dealing with this. Lord, say, I'm going to use that. That struggle you got. Paul tried to pray and say, hey, Lord, remove this struggle that I got. But Lord said, nah, that's how my glory going to rest on you. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad, amen, at God when he has made you a certain way. Amen. Trust in him that his glory may rest on you. Because at the end of the day, I want his glory to rest on me. I'd rather be a stuttering preacher that his glory may rest on me. Amen. A stuttering preacher that God can have his way because that's when everybody doubt. When you come with problems and issues, you're not the people's choice. You're God's choice. And a lot of times we want to be people's choice, but not God's choice. When you're God's choice, you got some problems about you. When you got choice, amen, you got an issue or you got something that you're struggling with and some insecurities about yourself. Read. And teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, sin, I pray thee, by the hand of him. Send somebody else. That's how we are. Lord, use somebody else. And I told somebody this, amen, a while ago. The person that don't want to do, that's what God want to use. That person that's running, that's who God want to use, amen. Because why? Because they don't want this. Told my pastor the other day at the maze, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. Well, it came to me. I said, this is the best thing I never asked for. I never asked for this. <laughs> I never, I, 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 I would tell somebody the other day, I came, amen, 
to school, to go to school and have some fun. Amen. But he was waiting on me the whole while. I came to school and I was having me a little fun. Amen. But the Lord pumped my brakes. Why? Because he had a plan for me and a purpose for me. And when you built the last, you got to understand who has who's building you and working on you. Continue to read. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. Uh huh. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. God still was using Moses' mouth. Yes, sir. I don't care how you try to run from it. God's going to still use you no matter how you fight, how much you fight, how much you resist. When God has a purpose for you, you got to do his will. And I was telling the church this yesterday. Jonah tried to run. And sometimes you got to watch who around you when they're not doing the will of the Lord. Because they'll be around you and your stuff start cutting up. Yes, <laughs> your car start breaking down. You say, hold up. Hey, what you got going on? You and the Lord beefing or something? I got to check something, man. I don't know what's going on. Because at the end of the day, amen, it's not our plan. It's not our blueprint. And I love this about God. Go to Romans chapter 8. Hey, shout out. Romans chapter 8 and verse, uh, verse 27. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Uh-huh. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Uh-huh. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Him, them that are called according to his purpose. Read. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. I love when God and Paul start dealing with predestination. And one thing about God, that path that you're on with him, it ain't just start when you came into the church. God ain't make that path that he has for you when you came to the church. It was already planned. Yes, sir. It was already made, Amen. It was already constructed. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So that means he know what's on that road that you're walking on in him. My Lord. He know every, amen, construction work. He know every bump. He know everything about what you're going to face on this walk with him. Yes, sir. My Lord. And this is why you have to depend on him so much. Because I'm walking on this journey. Lord, I don't know what's going to come up, but you do. And this is why the Bible said, jump down to verse, amen, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So he made your path and he created, amen, your lane, your walk, amen, your journey. Then he called you into the church and said, walk it. Yes, sir. And when I lean on to him, I ain't got to worry about what's on my journey. A lot of times we're facing what we're facing right now. And we're thinking God is surprised about it. Yes, sir. We're thinking God just, oh, I didn't know you was going to do that. <laughs> I didn't know you was going to be ready to quit on me. God already knew. That's why God is so, he can be so quick to have mercy on you because he already know. When you know something already, you can have more compassion and more understanding. Because I already know you was going to make that mistake. I already know, amen, you was going to do this. I already know you ain't going to want to come to church on this Sunday. I already knew this, amen. But keep going. That's why the man of God to preach, amen, keep going. But pastor, I did keep going. Why? Because God has predestinated you. God already made the route. God know what you're going to go through. But you got to keep going. If he called you, amen, he going to make sure you're good. Keep reading. And whom he called, Mm -hmm. then he also justified. He justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. That's a beautiful thing. I'm justified already. (laughs) That's when you predestinated. You're justified already. You don't understand. God, why am I still here? Lord, why am I still going? 
Lord, why am I, why am I putting my shoes on to go to church? And I don't want to go, Lord. Why am I doing these things? Why? Because I'm built for this. Hallelujah. I got something in me, amen, that, that just keep making me go, amen, to the house of God. Hallelujah. I got something in me, amen, that keep pushing me, hallelujah, when I don't want to go. Why? Because God already made the path. He's already called you. He's already justified you. And he's going to get the glory out of your life. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, shout out. This God's on. Let him work. Hallelujah. <laughs> get out of his way and let him work. Yeah. Amen. Move out his way and let him work. Hallelujah. Before I got up, amen, the Lord showed me, amen, he, he was building something. He looked back and said, I'm working. And he said it with an attitude. I'm working. Get out of his way and let him work. Let him do what he's doing in your life. I know you got issues. I know you got insecurities, but God is working, hallelujah. And God cannot fail at what he's doing. I heard a preacher say, God doesn't do anything to fail. <laughs> he doesn't make his mind up to call you in the church just so you can fall and backslide and never come back to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All that's doing is building you. You can't witness to nobody if you've never been through nothing. We try to come to church and don't want to go through nothing. Yeah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. you got some scars on your back? I know I do. <laughs> How many of y'all got some scars on your back? Hallelujah. How many of y'all done been through something? Hallelujah. How many of y'all are going through something? <laughs> it's building you. Why? Because it's somebody that's going to walk through those same doors that's going to need your help. Hallelujah. And if you ain't been through nothing, hallelujah, if you ain't built up, hallelujah, you can't help nobody else. You can't help nobody else. Hallelujah. A lot of jobs nowadays, they don't like to train you for nothing. <laughs> they don't train you for nothing. They just expect you to know everything about the job. <laughs> and then you work, work there for at least two, three months. They're going to bring somebody in and say, hey, train them. <laughs> you know he said, and then they, they pump your head up and say, yeah, he's a good worker. He, and he know everything. Hey, train him real fast. They don't want to pay you for it or nothing. <laughs> Amen. But God doesn't do that. He trains you. He builds you up. Because there's somebody that's going to walk through them doors that's going to need to hear something from you. We like to, hey, pastor, pray for him. Pastor, say something to him. What about you? He preached to you every Sunday, every Wednesday. Why? So that you can minister to somebody else. All that word that you got in you ain't just for you to sit in you. That's why a lot of us sick, hallelujah, spiritually, hallelujah, because we got a lot of food in us, amen, and it ain't coming out. Either it's going to come out the mouth or it'll come out somewhere else, amen. But it got to get out of you or you're going to get sick, hallelujah, amen. Find somebody to witness to, find somebody to minister to, hallelujah. We've been built up for no reason. It's in the nature of Satan to test you and test what you're trying to build. It's in his nature. When you say, I'm going to do this for the Lord, I'm going to build my prayer life, oh, he's going to try it. He's going to tear that thing down, too. He's going to try his best. Oh, she said, and she got it, came in prayer at the altar, said, I'm, Lord, I'm going to give you, I'm going to build my prayer life, I'm going to build this relationship with you, and he's listening. So, okay, we're going to see. And I know y'all sang that song, Everything That The Devil Tried, God Made It Fail. That ain't my testimony. Because <laughs> some stuff God allowed it to happen, amen. I'm pretty sure Job, amen, would attest to that. But he has to let it happen so you know what's inside of you. That's, imagine somebody training for football practice and all you do is practice. But you never have an opponent to go against. You'll never know how good you are. You never can rank yourself or know where you stand if you're just going against yourself. So sometimes God has to step back and let the, let the devil do what he wants to do so you can know what's inside of you. You can say, hey, my prayer life ain't there yet. Let me get back to the altar. Because if he never let the devil test you, then you'll think you're fine. You'll believe that you are okay. But when he let the devil come, 
and wreak havoc. You say, Lord, I ain't ready yet, Lord. Help me. You come back to the altar. You come back in no time. You run into the altar. My Lord. But go to Job. All right, let's just go there. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you're built to last, and it's easy to say that. It's easy to preach that because it sounds good. But Church of God, the Bible way is different. Uh, this, ain't, this ain't your regular old church. The devil fight us here. <laughs> he going to try you here. And get your shout on, get your dance on, but put your hands up too. <laughs> Don't walk out them doors with your hands down and say, you got no, oh, you got to keep them up. <laughs> Some of us need to be like this in the spirit, just every day, like this. Why? Because he's fighting us. Because we hold the whole hand of God. We have the truth. So he's going to fight us different. Go to Job chapter 1 and verse 1. We're just going to hit this and I'm going to move on. Amen. Uh, Job chapter 1 and verse 1. Man, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Uh His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. He was the greatest of all the men of the East. I believe that God was looking down at Job and God really wanted to know if Job really loved him. Because he had nothing to test it or compare it to. He had God was up there and said, well, he went through this and he still loved me. He still was with me. So I'm pretty sure God was just looking out and saying, I really want to know if Joel really loved me. I done blessed him with all this. I done protected him. Amen. And then Satan came that one day. He said, ah, just, just try him one time. Have you tried? My, have, you, have you visit my servant? And I'm pretty sure inside of God, amen, it just, this is me. This is me, how I'm thinking that God was thinking, amen. I really want to know if he loved me. It shall talk on my sake or not. I really want to know, do he really care for me? When we first came, amen, into the church, everything was sweet. Everything was good. Hallelujah. They couldn't tell you nothing about your God. Amen. You got the shotgun ready to shoot everybody in their mama. Amen. Everything was going right. Jobs going right. Money was going right. Amen. But God probably was looking out and said, I really want to know if they love me. Hey. I know that God knows that Pastor Paulie loves us. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. God know <laughs> that that man loved him. He know. And your love is not shown through your prayer. Your love is not shown through you coming to church. Your love is not shown, amen. You hearing the preacher where he say, preach, preacher. Your love is shown when you can go through something and you did nothing to deserve it. When you can go through something, amen, and all you've been doing is preaching to the people, praying for the people, visiting the people, getting talked about by the people, and you're still doing right. But God said, try my servant, Joe. That's Shabbasa. That's how you prove your love to God. When you then went through something, but you keep picking yourself up and say, Lord, I love you enough. I love you too much to, to go back. I don't, I don't have a plan B. That's it. I don't have a plan C, plan D. This is all I got. I don't know about you all, amen. In the back of their mind, even though I can go to my pastor and tell him, Pastor, I feel like giving up. A part of me said, you know you ain't going nowhere. You all know you ain't going nowhere. Uh, you ain't going nowhere. I don't even say it with confidence. I just say it. I'll be like, Pastor, I don't like, I, I, I'm going to be here any longer. I, I feel like going back. I know I ain't going nowhere. This is all I got, amen. God has been too good to me, hallelujah. The love that I have feel and love that I feel for God, I can't, I can't find it nowhere else, hallelujah. I, 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 if I search for it, I won't find it. You can't compare his love to nothing. It ain't the miracles, it ain't the blessings. 
That's the love that I feel in my heart. When I'm down and out, amen. I was in a car with one of the saints, and I, I was going through at that time. The Lord hit me, and I'm, and I'm, they just, I'm like, I'm sorry, it's going to get real. <laughs> I remember my pastor said the same thing. He, he kicked us out of the church. He said, he said hey, um, pastor, tell me, brother Ernest, um, uh, let me get some time with the Lord. Because it got real. And sometimes it gets so real, it gets so intimate with the Lord. And I really can't explain it to you. You got to try. And when you actually experience that, I don't care what you are faced with. I ain't going nowhere. Amen. If I'm going to be broke, I'm going to be broke in the church. <laughs> Amen. If I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick in the church. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. Look at a neighbor. <laughs> I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> and if I did, <laughs> I still wouldn't go. Hallelujah. I'm staying here. Hallelujah. God has been too good to me. Look, God Almighty. If you know God has been good to you, shout the highest praise. Ah, shout the highest praise if you know he's been good to you. Good God Almighty. He's, he's, a, he's the love of my life, amen. That's short quote by side. I'm getting happy right now, hallelujah. The way he touches me, hallelujah. Good God Almighty, amen. Ah, that's the only man, amen, that can touch me the way he do, hallelujah. That's the only man that can caress me, hallelujah. And the only man that I can cross through at night, hallelujah. And he ain't got no problems with it. Good God Almighty. Hey. That's a love, that's a love, that's a love. That's a love, hallelujah. Amen. I don't love him, amen, because I decided to love him. I love him because he loved my jacked up so. He loved my messed up so. He loved me, hallelujah. He loved me, hallelujah. And good God Almighty, I ain't taking it back. I ain't going back. I ain't going back. Listen, it's a neighbor. I ain't going back. Hey, shout out my say. You felt this love, huh, Shata? You feel it right now. Ah, Yabasa. You know it ain't nothing, ain't nothing better than this. Yes, you going through hell right now, amen. But a song said his love lifted me, hallelujah, right out of hell. Good God Almighty. When I was down and out, his love lifted me. His love, his love. That's why you're still here, New North. All the problems that we have. It's his love that's keeping us. Because we ain't got a gun to your head and say, stay. <laughs> you can walk out them doors right now. Anytime you feel like you can walk out them doors. You all are grown adults. We're just pastoring. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I tell the people, I, I can't tell you what to do. You do what you're going to do. I'm just advising you. Amen. Amen. You can leave anytime you want. But the love. Paul said, Paul said his love constrained us. Ah, his love, his love, his love. I don't know why the Lord lead me this way, but his love. A lot of times, amen, if we could just tap into the love of God, we'll be all right. Let him meet you at night. I wish I could explain it to you. I wish I could. Amen. It's something different. His love will make you not want anybody else. His love, hallelujah, make you squirming. Amen. You can't stay still. Hallelujah. Who experienced that before? It's the love of God. And I'm pretty sure that God was looking at Job and said, I want to know if you love me. God just want to know if somebody loves him. Imagine this person that do everything for you, that's there for you all the time, that's providing for you. And you don't even say, I love you. Imagine how that person would feel. He's a God that sits high and looks low. He's the king of kings. We can give him all that titles we can give him. But all he wants is love. Bump the titles. He just wants your love. We can say these fancy words to God and the theophany of God and all that other stuff. But God just wants your love. God wants you to go through for him. And still hold on to him. And District Elder, he said something last time he was here, our Overseer Johnson. <laughs> Amen. He said something when he was here, and, and it's been in my spirit, and I can't shake it. He said, we're in the wilderness. 
And one thing about the wilderness, amen, those 40 years only two people came out. And it wasn't because they was better than everybody. It was the mindset. I don't care if you're going through in your body. As long as you keep your mind on the Lord, you'll be all right. Let's go there real fast. Numbers chapter 13. Hey, Shabbat. I'm about to get out your way. Where your mind is. Uh... Jump down to verse 17, Numbers 13 and verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan Mm -hmm. and said unto them, get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain Mm -hmm. and see the land, what it is. And the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be in that dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, Mm -hmm. and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first, uh, first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron, where Ahiman, Seshai, Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Mm-hmm came unto the brook of Ischel and cut down from branch which one cluster of grapes. And they buried between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook of Eschel because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. Mm-hmm. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Mm-hmm. And they told him and said, We come unto the land where thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong. Nevertheless, while we're going through this journey in this wilderness, that it may it feel like a wilderness, mm-hmm. you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what comes out your mouth. Because victory starts in the mouth. He said, we didn't search the land. And the things that you said, Moses, they are there. But nevertheless, a lot of times we can speak victory. We can see victory. But we got a nevertheless mindset. Nevertheless, Lord, I did this. Nevertheless, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Nevertheless, you have to watch your mind and watch what comes out of your mouth. But read. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. Uh And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Uh And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Mm-hmm. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. There's a path that God wants you to take in him. And you may have some giants. All of us got a giant that we got to face. All of us got a place that God wants us to go. And it seems like We're not going to get the victory. But you got to have a Caleb mindset. And I'm pretty sure Caleb wasn't a big guy. And he seen those giants. And he said, my Lord is bigger. He didn't allow what he seen. Amen. And what's around him to deter him. What God said was his. If God has promised you something, go get it. If God has said you was going to be this. Go be it. Don't allow what you see to deter you. And a lot of time, you're going to come in between in that, in that middle. That's when the problem comes. Yes, sir. From when God speak it to fulfillment. That middle from A to B, that's what we're struggling in. Yes, sir. 
That's what we're fighting with. But if you can make it out of that, if you can press your way, amen, you will see what God has for you. But you got to have a Caleb mindset. You got to have a heart, amen, and say, I'm going to trust in my God. And I'm going to believe that he is able. How many of y'all believe that God is able? How many of y'all believe, amen, the things that he said about you, amen, going to come to pass? Amen. I know you probably feel like you're in the wilderness, amen. And you feel like, amen, you're doing, amen, you're coming to church, you're coming to church, amen, and nothing is changing. Lord, I don't feel you the same way that I used to. Lord, I, 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 don't, I don't have dreams like that. I don't, I don't have visions no more, Lord. Where, where are you? I feel like, amen, you have left me, but God has not left you. You're just in the, in the middle. And if you can press your way, you're going to be all right. You're going to be that woman of God, that prophetess, that prophet, amen, that preacher. You're going to be that, hallelujah. Uh, I thought I had a church on tonight. You're going to be, amen, what God calls you to be, amen. And you are built for this. You are tailor-made for this. I was in Savannah, and I'm getting out your way. I was on the highway, and I looked to the right, and I seen that still building in a recession. They're still building in a recession. How are you building, amen, when the world, amen, is seeing in the economy, seems like it's crumbling? Why? Because I'm not allowing what's around me and the things that's going on in the world to the fact, amen, what I purpose, amen, that I'm going to do. If the world got that mindset, are we greater than the world? Okay, man, can we, amen, plan something and purpose something and what God has said about us come to pass even though hell is around us? If the world can do it, we can do it. If the world, amen, can accomplish things while hell, amen, things ain't going right like money ain't flowing the same. If the world can still keep going, the church can still keep going. Amen. The church, amen, amen, ain't going to stop. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God got a plan for the church. Amen. God has a purpose for the church. Amen. And last time I checked, I'm not perfected yet, so God is still working. Good God, go to Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm closing with this. Ephesians chapter 4. I need some Caleb's, amen, in the church on tonight. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse uh, 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Uh -huh. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles mm. and some prophets My Lord. and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. You work with your hands. <laughs> You build with your hands. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. And when you build with your hands, hallelujah, you're, you're, you're building something, amen, that you plan to build. Yes, sir. Read. For the perfecting of the saints. Uh-huh. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Uh-huh. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Go back to verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Uh-huh. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So the perfecting of the saints. So God hand. And thank God that we have the hand of God. As long as we got the hand of God, God can work on us. He told Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. And when you're dealing with that, amen, you got to use your hands, amen. The mold and shape, amen, how you want the, amen, the, the glass to be formed or the cup to be formed, amen. And that's how God is with us. He got us on that wheel, amen, and God is forming us. God is shaping us. And long as God's hand is still with us, he's still working on us. Hallelujah. Long as God's hand is with us, he's still working. I'm, I'm not perfected yet, but I'm, he's working on me. This is God's zone, hallelujah. Amen. I'm no, I don't care, amen, what you say about me. Amen. I don't care what you, you didn't say, it, amen. Years ago, I'm going to keep letting God work on me. The operation of God. Allowing God to operate on you. Read. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children. You got to be encouraged. and learn, Sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself. 
Amen. What you're going through, amen, is not uncommon. Hallelujah. And a lot of times, amen, what we face, amen, we feel like we're the only one going through. And when you feel like you're the only one going through, it's easy for you to give up. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I'm built to go through what I'm going through. And I'm not just built for this. I'm built to last. I'm built to last, amen. As long as my God sit on the throne, I'm built to last, amen. And I don't care what nobody say. We're going to make it out of this. Hey, God. I can look on some of y'all faces y'all going through. Amen. But you're going to make it out of this. Look at him and say, neighbor, I got to make it out of this. I'm reminded of a prophet named Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, amen. The Lord said, I'm moving out your way. The Lord said, before, amen, I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Amen. Before you came out your mother's womb, I sanctify you. Hallelujah. And that same prophet, amen, that God has spoken these great things about, amen, find himself cursing God and saying, Lord, you deceived me. Hallelujah. Lord, amen, all this stuff that I'm going through, amen, I, I didn't know I was going to face every, everything like this. Amen. You just told me I was going to prophesy to the people, amen. You ain't tell me, amen, I'm going to be smacked by kings. Hallelujah. And a lot of times, God don't tell you everything that you're going to go through. Amen. Because if he did, you won't be here right now. Amen. If he told you everything that you was going to face, you wouldn't be here right now. But I thank God. A prophet named Jeremiah, amen, said it was like fire shut up in my bone, amen, when I wanted to give up because what I was going through. The fire, amen, the word that was in me, amen, it stood me up, hallelujah, and allowed me to keep going, amen. I thank God for a pastor, amen, that can preach a word in me, hallelujah. And when I feel like giving up, amen, the that word, amen, is stirred up inside of me, hallelujah. That word, hallelujah, allows me to keep going. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, he said the word was shut up on my bones like fire, hallelujah. You're built for this, and you're built to last. If you watch the prophets, they went through so much, but they kept going. And you're going to face trials and tribulations, but keep going. Hallelujah. Keep going. Keep going. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at him and say, neighbor, I'm going to keep going. Ah, look at him and say, neighbor, I'm built to last. Ah, come on. Say it like you mean. I'm built to last. Ah, hell or high water, I'm built to last. And I'm going to make it out of this. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, saints. I just want to encourage you. I didn't want to hold you long, but be encouraged. Better is the end of something than the beginning of it. And you can't appreciate something at the beginning stage. But when you see the finished product, when you see the man of God, the woman of God that God's going to call you to be, amen, you'll be able to say, Lord, this is why I went through this. Lord, this is why I had to face this. That's why my family had to turn their back on me. Because you was building me a certain way. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're building, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's building you. He's building you. He's building you. He's building you. He's building you to go through. Building you to endure. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Ah, look at him and say, neighbor, ain't no going back because I'm built for this. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, let's give God a hand clap of praise for that word on tonight. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you. Hey, man, this time we have a few more things that we're going to do. Um, 
Amen. We have a uh, we have brother Michael Singleton is going to come forth and uh, give us a reading. Amen. Uh, I should have left, but Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we thank God for that wonderful hallelujah. And can we stand to our feet? Amen. Thank God. Thank God for the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. For a wonderful word. Hallelujah. Amen. That encouraged us on tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I was encouraged by that word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm, I came before you all. Amen. I was asked to give a testimony. Hallelujah. Of when I should have. Amen. I should have left the church. Hallelujah. And just like what Minister uh, Pastor Timmy was saying, where I know I'm not going nowhere. Amen. But I left the church in my mind. Hallelujah. And, you know, a lot of testimonies is, is speaking about how you were at the bottom. Amen. God raised you up. Amen. But my testimony is a little bit different. How, how I, was, I felt like I was at the top and God brought me, and God brought me down. Amen. And just in the, in the, I know in the last year and a half that everyone has been going through, everyone has been having a battle in their mind and stuff like that. But this year and a half, for me specifically, um, I say this humbly, like, I have never had this much money in my life. I have never went as many trips as I have in my life. I have never did all the things I have in my life in this, this year and a half. But also in this year and a half, I have never felt so empty in my life. In this year and a half, I have never felt so depressed in my life. In this year and a half, I have never been so useless to my pastor in, a, in the, yeah, the last year and a half. And... It's just so crazy how that, you know, how, how everybody wants to, to have that money, have that status, have that job. And I had those things, and I have those things, and I thank God that he has blessed me for them. But one thing about that money, one thing about the, the status is that you can get so far in your own head that you don't think you don't need God. And that's a lot of times where I, got my, I found myself at where I, I didn't need God or was asking myself, I'm doing just enough to get by because I'm still getting blessed. And that's the worst place you can ever be is, 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 having, is thinking in your mind, I'm doing just enough to be blessed, that I'm doing just enough to have this money, I'm doing just enough to get on these trips, I'm doing just enough to have this house, this car, and that's the worst place that you can ever be at, and I came before you to tell, to tell God I'm sorry, and that, you know, again, a lot of times people, people give testimonies at the bottom, and I'm sorry, I'm just a little, little shaken by that word, but man, it's just, it's, just, it's, a, it's a powerful thing, and it's, it's, it's just confirmation that, you know, I was talking to Lewis, or Minister Lewis, and we were just talking, and like we were saying, how so many people strive to have a, have to have these jobs, like you know, being a, a doctor or a lawyer or you know, being a CEO. Amen. We have all these, these goals in the natural life, but in our spiritual life, we we're comfortable with having a Burger King, a McDonald's, a minimum wage type of spiritual life. And it hit me so hard because you know, I, I again, I have never accomplished so many goals, so many things off my bucket list that I wanted to do. And I just came out from Hawaii, and that was one of my buckets. I've never crossed so many things out in such a short amount of time. And, and it's just a, it's a, it's such a, 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 a terrible feeling that knowing that everyone else is around you is pleasing and, and, and congratulating you, and God is displeased with you. It's, 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 it's probably one of the worst feelings that you can have, man. And I'm, I promise you, like in the yes, you and a half. I have, and again, I, I put on facade, and I put on this, 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 face that I'm okay, and I put on this thing that, you know, everything's fine, because I've had all these things, and man, I tell you, man, these things are nothing, I mean, Solomon said these things are vanity, and when I tell you, man, it's, it's such a, it's a, it's, it sucks, you know, having everybody congratulate you for things, and, and saying good job, and all that, but, but no, but not even feeling God's love, it's, it's, it's a, it's a terrible feeling having, getting love from everybody else, but not God, and, and, you know, in this past Sunday, Man, I have, I mean, this past Sunday morning service, um, you know, God came and swept through this place like never before. And I haven't felt God, I have not felt God's presence in almost two years. And that was the first time I felt God for real in so long. And, and it's so ironic that, you know, that I felt God and I, I, I declared to myself that I, I'm not going back to where I used to be. I'm not going to have that same prophet mindset. And it's so... And it's crazy that, you know, one, uh, um, somebody reached out to me that hadn't been in church in so long. You know, they were backslidden, and they reached out to me by accident. And they reached out to me, and it was like, man, I just, I just, I, I'm coming to church. I'm just waiting for my life to get together. I'm waiting for my life to, to get together so I can come back to church. And I was like, you know what? My life has never been so put together in my life. And I'm still feeling empty from God. And so, man, when I came to say that God is truly the God of the valley and the mountain. Because it don't matter how high you get, you will lose your breath when you're at that mountain. No matter how low you get, you still need God. And, and I, was, I was able to minister to her. And I'm glad I was able to minister to her and say, like, man, like, it don't matter if you're at your bottomest or your highest. You still need God. And there's nothing that you can do 
to make you, to, to, <laughs> there's nothing that you can do basically for God to give up on you. Amen. And I, I'm just so glad that I'm able to be here and just, and that's my little testimony and, and I just ask God to pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Come on, we can do a little better than that. Amen. Powerful testimony. Powerful testimony. I'm his pastor, so I know everything he's talking about. I, uh, and every, everything he's saying is right. And it's, it's real to see a young man. And I was um, talking to the church. All right. I was talking to the church, and um, I know sometimes people feel like they're, they haven't progressed in their lives. But I told everybody that ever said that you've not progressed in your life since you've been in God, you're a liar. Because everyone in this congregation have, and, and some of y'all have got careers that you don't even qualify for. And I've seen a lot of times what happens is a lot of times we get to that altitude and we're progressing in that natural and we got a, a, a penny uh, savings account in the spirit. Nothing down there. And this young man will come to me and he, he, he tell the truth. He'll come to me, Pastor, I, I need help. Pastor, I'm trying to get back. I want to get back. And, and I'm glad. Listen, it's been a struggle and a fight. The devil's been fighting this ministry. But this past Sunday, I've never, I've never seen God move like that. It, it, it probably, he moved like that in this whole year. It was great. This, Sunday, this past Sunday morning, God swept through here. And, he, and I seen him laid out. He was up under the chair, boy. I said, God, do it. <laughs> I said, Lord, work on him. Came to me, he's pastor, you know, I, I, I feel good. I haven't felt that touch like that in a while. And I said, God just up to something. God is up. I think I was on vacation, and they called me and said, we have more visitors in the church than we had saints. I said, God, I said, God doing something. <laughs> and, and listen, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. God moved like that because you have people that come to God and sometimes we, and I'm closing, but sometimes we, we, we get a part of a ministry and we get comfortable. And then you have people that come expecting God. Jesus used to come to the towns and people, they're like, man, where he at? Where, where, where's this man that we, everybody been talking about? Everybody running around trying to find him. And so it promoted miracles. It promoted God's presence. And so when you got people coming in here expecting God to do something, it changes the environment. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get so complacent. We done heard, you know, heard baptism in Jesus' name. and heard the same songs in church oh, after Sunday after Sunday. And we lose our expectancy. All we do is we got to expect to see that somebody's going to sing this song. They're going to sing that. This person going to run around the church. This person going to shout in that corner. We got, we got all of it figured out. But we don't expect God to do something great. Lord. Lord, we came expecting a miracle. I shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God for this young man bringing forth a powerful message. God's own. See, when you're in God's own, he can do whatever he wants, when he wants to do it. And it ain't by your clock, it's by his. Amen. We we'll thank God for this young man bringing forth his powerful message. And, you know, we had, he picked up this, this invite this morning. Woke him out of his sleep and he got. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna preach tonight, but I said, you know what? We got some other powerful preachers. I think that God, uh, uh, the saints need to hear somebody that could minister to their soul. I'm glad uh, y'all heard me last night, so we got somebody tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We look forward to Pastor Van Beaver out. And my little cousin done finally made it over here. My little, my little baby, little, little Tim, little, little, little Tim. Got the minivan. The mini, minivan. Amen. Amen. We thank God for him. I'm so glad to see my best friend, the district elder. I really love this man. I love this man. 
Hey, man, we thank God for all of you all coming out tonight. I was giving final remarks. I think I done gave them already. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Johnson. Amen. Amen. We we having baby time. We got another baby that just got delivered. My, I got another little grandson, little GP is what I call him, little Gabriel Prince that made it out. Amen. We thank God. Amen. So glad that we have some of these new faces that have been coming to the church. They came to the anniversary. TK, Jalissa, my friend here. She's here. Amen. My new little daughter's over here. Way, way. Yeah. Amen. We thank God. Amen for the saints being here tonight. We appreciate everyone. Thank God for Jessup coming out tonight. Amen. Savannah in the house. Amen. State girl in the house. Everybody in the house. Amen. This is the start of something great. Ten years. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all something now. This has been a rough little rocky past. These past, these past three years have been rough. Well, you got the past about to throw in the towel. It got to be rough. Come on. Come on. Come on. And I tell you something, I'm, I'm probably one of the strongest people. And I'm not talking about strength, but I'm probably one of the strongest minded people that you will find. I done been through some stuff. And I almost gave, I almost gave this thing up. I almost gave it up this year. I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell my best friend, hey, y'all can come down here and tag team it all. But we made 10 years. You know, I had to preach an uh, anniversary of 10 years, and, and the Lord dropped in my spirit that 10, that's that dime, that dime season. Uh, you know how you get rated. You know, that dime is where, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. A dime is where it's at. But when you look at a dime, it's small in size. But amen, it, it, it got some value to it. God, I wish I had a few people. Amen, but we thank God. I, I'm glad that I'm still here, and I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. No, the devil mad. I ain't going nowhere. You know, sometimes you be trying to think about where. I was trying to figure out where I could go. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> Start thinking about all this. Start thinking about everybody. Think about the saints. Think about my mama. I said, man, what am I going to do? I can't leave that woman of God dead. And I start thinking about all the saints. I said, nah. The devil almost had me food, though. I was about to take a little, I was about to take a strong vacation. I was going to see me to next year at, at uh, the women's convention. I said, <laughs> I'd have them in the face alone. <laughs> Amen. It's good to smile. You ain't got to look mean like that. Smile. Amen. But we thank God, and uh, God is great. You know, this is, you know, when, when, when a church is moving and the church is progressing forward, we got to expect fights. We got to expect you know uh things to happen but we also got to expect god to do things as well yes, you know the material and, and and i'm gonna say this and i'm closing one thing i've learned about the buildings that last the longest is the buildings that have been built under the foundation those those are the ones that last the ones that you, you see when you're building something the foundation is here but a lot of buildings especially the skyscrapers it start at the bottom. And see, when you ain't got no foundation, that's why it's important to have the apostle and the prophet. I, I ain't come to, everyone stand, we're about to get ready to go. I didn't come to preach tonight. Amen. We thank God and we appreciate it, but we'll make sure that, that we know that this is the Lord's doing. And we made it and we're going to make 20 years. Yeah. Amen. By the time we make that, we, we're going to have our own little city. We're going to have a city. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We built the last, and I realized we built the last. We're getting old, brother. I said in 15 years, I'll be 50, boy. It's getting, it's getting real, man. But I built the last. Yeah. <laughs> built the last. I had to cut mine down. So their grades was coming out. They would look like antennas. They was, <laughs> my head full of curls, and then the, the grades standing up like the five-fold ministry. With uplifting hands, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest through the Bible to his now and forever. Somebody shout, that's for me and my house. We will, we shall, and we must serve the Lord. Look at somebody else and say, I see you tomorrow night.